of their of their culture. Anybody who has eaten kimchi here? Our favorite ang kimchi. Nobody. Damo. Okay. Why do you eat kimchi? Appetizer. And pampagana. Oh, appetizer. Pampagana. What else? Side dish. Snack. Did anyone? Uh, is any one of you here eating kimchi because it has nutritional or has benefits to health? I know. I notice you most Koreans because kimchi is a staple for them, right? There is um, wala meal sa Korea nga wala upod ng kimchi, so it's a staple. It's a staple of food. Very popular. Na notice nyo? Ang Koreans, ano, gamay lang sa ila ang obese. And, hindi sila skinny. Ba? Because they say fermented products, not just kimchi. Fermented products has its benefits. Alam, makao na sila karoon kimchi. Not just kimchi, but fermented products in general. No? Has a lot of benefits to human health. Especially to healthy gut. Healthy stomach. Um, we will learn later on why, because there are a lot of friendly microorganisms that um, is being encouraged to grow in your stomach when you eat a lot of fermented food. Okay. So ferment comes from the word fermentum, which is Latin, which means to boil. So chemical changes are brought about in an organic substrate through the action of biochemical catalysts known as enzymes elaborated by specific types of living microorganisms. Usually, uh, fermentation, um, may arasya starter culture, ginatawag. And these are different types of microorganisms, depending on what type of fermented product you are producing. Those foods that have been subjected to the action of microorganisms or enzymes so that desirable biochemical changes, take note of the word desirable, can cause significant modification in food. Example of in some cases, um, we say fermentation is some kind of a food spoilage in itself. Kaya lang, ang changes na nag occur sa iya is desirable sa palig. Example, curdling of milk is being used in the production of cheese or yogurt products. It's some kind of a similar process to spoilage, but it gives you a product that is palatable or consumable and beneficial to health. Okay. So, the importance of fermentation, relatively efficient, low energy preservation process, it increases shelf life and has lesser need for refrigeration. It's the most appropriate technique for developing countries. So when we, when we try to think of um, fermented products, fermented products, except of course wine and beer, you can find most of the fermented products in developing countries. When we think of the Philippines, what is our famous fermented product? Hmm? Tuba? Famous? Vinegar, yes. Nga atong mid bala? Apart from wines and beers and spirits. Ginamos. Can you find the ginamos in, uh, is there ginamos in Thailand? I don't know. May probably similar, similar product. But we have a lot of fermented products, right? Ginamos, tuba. What else? When you think of other countries, they have a lot of fermented products as well. Japan? I know. They have soy bean curd. They have soya products. What else? Korea, of course, kimchi. In Africa, they have a lot of fermented products as well. So mostly fermented, why is it that fermented products are associated with developing countries? Or let's say third world countries as well. Why? No, it does not need refrigeration, yes. Hindi mo electricity to produce. What else? Cheap ang ingredients to make. What else? Very easy. 
you do not need machines to produce fermented products. So for example, for in soya, for example, for soybeans nga i-ferment mo siya, you just need clay pots, for example. Or when you do ginamos, ano lang? Very simple. You do not, you do not need machines. So it's very, that's why it's very, very, ferment, fermentation is very popular sa developing countries. Widespread in Asian countries, supply protein, minerals, and other nutrients, add variety and fortification, and has great potential to contribute to growing food needs. What is the role of fermentation in the food supply? It improves food security, contributes to food preservation, salvaging food wastes, removal of anti-nutritional factors, you could learn later on that microorganisms that are used as substrate for fermented products use up some of the toxic components of the food. Improving nutrition, vitamins and digestibility, yogurt, says, or yakult, for example, healthy for your, for your gut. Increasing income and employment, it gives income to a lot of um, unemployed people, uh, fermented products. It has medicinal benefits. Improving food security. So it's cheap and energy efficient, does not need electricity to produce, most of them. Undergo rapid deterioration sometimes, mostly in tropical conditions. And it's comparable to drying, freezing, and canning. It's just that it's more cheaper. Nga technology. So salvaging waste foods. Waste foods are salvaged by changing consistency of, consistency of products and making it digestible. For example, in some cases, um, ang buro ng manga is a fermented product. Usually, what do we use? Remember, may mga instances nga may typhoon, magkaladagdag ang mga manga, nga hilaw pa. Eh, hindi mo na siya makaon, right? Hindi siya palatabon because tama siya kaaslon. What do you usually do kay kanugon siya? Food waste na siya tani eh. You make buro ng manga. So it, what? It helps minimize food waste and turn something unpalatable to something that is good to consume. Increasing range of raw materials available as food. Removal of anti-nutritional factors. Fruits and vegetables sometimes have naturally occurring toxins and anti-nutritional compounds. So some of these compounds are being removed by your microorganisms. Example, in cassava, cassava is known to have inherently what? Cyanogenic glucoside or cyanide inherent sa iya. That's why you have um, instances where in there were children, no? Na napatay because of consumption of cassava cake na ginabaligya sa schools. Na wala masyado na process. Um, there are certain technologies, uh, sorry, certain fermentative techniques that you can use to prolong the life of, of cassava. And these techniques actually uh, diminish the amounts of cyanide in cassava or totally um, destroys the presence of cyanide in cassava. Actually, easy man lang siya, ma-remove ang cyanide sa cassava. No? Good preparation lang. Removal of the skin, washing very well, boiling a certain amount of time. But if one of these is skipped, actually, very deadly siya. And imagine, hindi mo siya detect no smell, no of taste, sometimes, nothing. And then it just dropped dead. Okay. Improving nutrition. When I was actually, um, uh, when I was studying fermentation for one of my lectures in UPV, first time that I handled food processing wherein uh, f fermentation was a, was a topic. No? Um, I was, I, it opened my eyes to the benefits of fermented products. Yeah. If you, later on, because this is just an overview of what fermentation is, if you have time, search for benefits of fermented products. And I'm sure you will be encouraged to consume a lot of fermented products later on. Because really, naga help gitsa sa digestion and overall um, health some some person. Um, most, of course, beer is a fermented product, but I'm not saying that uh, you should eat or drink uh, wine is a fermented product. 
good for the heart, hambal nila, but not one bottle a day. <laughs> may mga ano na siya, may mga, there are studies, there are conflicting studies with regards to to wine and its um, benefit to, to to the heart. May benefit man git siya, kaya kung heartbroken ka, wine, beer, so so vitamins, digestibility, this is just one of those benefits of fermented products. Of course, it increases income and employment of, of people on the countryside. Medicinal benefits as well. Um, especially on lactic acid bacteria. Um, if you read or Google on lactic acid bacteria, it would open your eyes to a lot of benefits brought about by lactic acid bacteria that grows in your yogurt, that grows on your yakult that grows on a lot of fermented products, that grows on your kimchi, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, lactic acid bacteria. There are a lot of, that laylain lang siya nga species, or oh, laylain lang siya nga, nga lactic acid, type of lactic acid bacteria. Pero puro siya la LAs. And they have a lot of medicinal, uh, um, medicinal benefits. But then, um, Yakult for example, because LAB is a sensitive microorganism, um, an increase in temperature can easily uh, destroy your LAB. That's why uh, you try to take a look at what type of fermented product you are you are buying, especially kung sa changi mo lang siyagin buy. More or less, it's exposed to a lot of um, environmental factors, especially heat, which the claim siya 1 billion na arada ng microorganisms. Tapos pag inom mo, wala galing, pinapatay sila tanan. Because na-exposed siya sa very high heat. Okay. Um, in the fermentation process, what is usually being done is that you need to ensure that your right microorganisms that favor the fermentation process grows rapidly and in greater numbers compared to the growth of some other microorganisms. Remember, your food product, for example, that bihon there, na wala ko pa nakaon. Lain-lain nga types of microorganisms ang ara dira. Not just one strain. Different types. May molds, probably may molds pa man at the spores. Or may yeast. Wala lang sila nag-multiply rapidly. Hindi lang anay, kay kaunan ko pa na siya. Pero, not just one. There are a lot. And some of them might cause spoilage, but some of them might be encouraged to grow to initiate fermentation, which can create a good fermented product. So the technique in fermentation process is to encourage the growth of the target microorganisms that can initiate fermentation. And usually, when these good microorganisms grow rapidly in numbers, na overcome nila ang mga undesirable microorganisms, na overpower nila. So they compete for the nutrients. What are the microorganisms responsible for fermentation? You have bacteria, you have molds, you have yeast. Usually for bacteria, you have lactic acid bacteria or acetic acid bacteria, which is responsible for vinegar, production of vinegar. It can be unicellular or multicellular. <clears throat> Your molds, they can be aspergillus or penicillium species. Or for yeasts, you have saccharomyces. Usually, yeasts are being used for the production of wines or beers. So different types of microorganisms would yield different types of fermented products. <clears throat> if you are going for the alcoholic type of fermentation, Usually, the most popular ones are saccharomyces and the food products that you're going to produce are beer, wine, cider, bread. There's a fermentation process which we will discuss later in baking science. Naan is um, Indian bread and kefir. Kefir is uh, um, Jewish na food, fermented. If you are aiming for the lactic type of fermentation, you use lactic acid bacteria, which can produce your yogurt. Homolactic, lactococcus, certain lactobacillus, fermented milk, cheeses, and dry sausages. Heterolactic, 
fermented milks as well, sauerkraut. You're familiar with sauerkraut? Cab fermented nga, if I'm not mistaken, cabbage. Cabbage. Ha. Fermented cabbage. Green olives and bread. Malolactic. On a cocos, you have wine. Propionic, you have propioni bacterium, which can produce through fermentation hard cheeses. And acetic fermentation using acetobacter producing vinegar. That is why, um, manotis nyo kung kaysa ang production of, of wine, pag hindi mo siya na-arrest, na mo siya langaw. Diba? Sweet siya at first. Or if you notice, if you are doing a little bit of fermentation sa balay nyo, producing wine, like you can you can enjoy like the French people, you enjoy you can enjoy wine every meal. If you want to produce, you can produce it at your homes. Pwede gin. Very easy. Very easy. But you just make sure na stop mo siya ang process of fermentation at a certain time because kung hindi, it's either you go into the super alcoholic na part, inang nagapag-open mo palang sang pork, nagaalinga saw na ang alcohol niya, or ano matawa sa iya, hindi na alcohol ang iim non mo. Langgaw na. So instead ng wine at your table, pinamalhan at your table. Gamay doon man na siya kalanggaw. Okay. So these are most of the foodborne bacteria and fungi that are in fermented products. So there are a lot that you can use. Some of them, you can actually produce on your own by grow, by letting certain food products spoil and getting the culture microorganisms and then straining them. It's a long process. But you can buy pure cultures. May a little bit expensive, but you are sure that you that you grow, your technology is more cleaner. No other microorganisms involved. Sure ka nga mo ina-strain. Eh kung mag-culture ka lang sa balay mo, mag-isolate ka. There are instances na na-contaminate siya sa other types of microorganisms. And you cannot probably have the same quality of fermented product that you would want to use. For example, in soy sauce, soy sauce, uh, or in, for example, let's just say beer. Why is it that San Miguel beer, for those who are drinking, is uh, has a different taste compared to ano pang iba nga beer na ginain yung beer? Red Horse. Gold Eagle. Ano pang yun? Red Horse. Lain. Of course, of, of course, kami different alcoholic content siya kung kaisa. Some have 4%, 4.5, 5.5, may 3.5. In some cases, they also use a different raw material. Some barley, malt, ano pa na. In some cases, halos same sila, pero different lang ang yeast na ginagamit. Different species. Pwede nga pareho sila sa caromyces, for example, pero lain siya. Ang isa sa revishay, ang isa bilain naman. So because of the different species, lain man nga type of ferment, fermentation process ang, gina, nga, ang gina-undergo niya, different man nga quality sa sang commodity ang, ang ma-produce niya. Why are some beers, mo, um, why are some wines, for example, more tangy or more um, acidic ang iyang nga, nga taste sa, sa tongue? Because of the different types of microorganisms that are being used in the production of the wine. Okay? So, kung isa, ang secret sa mga distilleries are in the yeasts. Different types of species. And usually, they have a parang library of yeast nila yung ginagamit for their meals. Para consistent. And they are sure na pure ang culture of yeast na ginabutang. Okay. So, alcoholic fermentation. You have the chemistry equation there that I don't want to go into. You want to go into that? Okay, so it's usually used as yeast, um, unicellular fungus, pH range of 4 to 4.5, that's why your beer is a little bit acidic. Water requirement of 0 0.85 to 0 0.88. Basic substrate, sugar. So your yeast, it's up your sugar to produce. What? Carbon dioxide and, anong OH? Kala na balik kita sa chemistry. Alcohol. Substrate mo is sugar. It's also important in leavening of bread. No, ang pag-alsa sa leaven or ang pag-alsa sa tinapay. No, you use yeasts for that. 
If you are into baking, you are familiar with that. Baka gamoy yeast. Production of alcoholic drinks. So production of juice. From juice of fruits, soluble sugars. You produce beers or wines or other alcoholic commodities. This is just a short process of how wines are produced. So you extract the juice from the fruit. Depende kung grapes man na or pineapple man na so You extract the fruit. Spontaneous addition of starter culture, which is your microorganism. Then rapid produ production of carbon dioxide because gina eat up niya ang sugars na present in your fruit. Ano ang sugar sa fruit? Ha? Fructose. Fructose which is a uh, monosaccharide. And monosaccharides are easily digested by the body. That is why, mas dangerous mag-eat sang, mag-drink sang, uh, mag-eat sang fruit, nga high in fructose, isa mag-drink sang juice na process na. Mas dangerous siya sa diabetics. Because ang, ang mostly ang, ang sugar dili is already polysaccharide na. Refined sugar na siyang ginagamit. Well, you have a little bit of fructose here. But pag fruit nga fresh, totally fructose gina siya. In some cases, may glucose siya. For those are monosaccharides and they are easily digested by the body. Dasig na siya ma-absorb sa body. So pag absorb, shoot up na dahil yung sugar. Blood sugar. Okay. Anyway, so, Ang your yeast eats up your sugar to produce rapid production of carbon dioxide and alcohol. Mature, then ginaklarify nila by the use of chemicals sometimes or by the use of other microorganisms. Ngayon clarify ang um, para wala na siyang may mga, may mga cellular components ang mga wine. And then in a bottle. Lactic acid bacteria, usually gram-positive bacteria, non-respiring, non-spore former, um, either microaerophilic or facultative anaerobic. We learned that kung, kung microaerophilic siya or facultative anaerobic siya, hindi siya amuna ka, what? Hindi siya amuna ang need niya for oxygen. So it can grow in low oxygen na environment. So basic substrate ng gabon is sugar. And it produces lactic acid, ethanol, and carbon dioxide. So because ang ma-produce niya nga products is acid, ethanol, and carbon dioxide, lain naman nga type of fermented product ang imuma ma-produce. So amuni ang mga growth requirements niya. Temperature of 20 to 30. A little bit of high salt concentration. Water activity around 0 0.9, which is very high. PH of around near neutral. Dira siya naga, naga thrive ang lactic acid bacteria. So in order for you to produce a, a good fermented product using lactic acid bacteria, you need to ensure ang imo nga substrate is not acidic. Oxygen availability, it can be anaerobe or aerobe. And nutrients, it requires carbohydrates because it thrives on sugar. Application of lactic acid bacteria, fermentation of sordo bread, it's being used in sorghum beer, fermented milks, and most fermented vegetables. So kimchi, ang base niya is lactic acid. Or your uh, sauerkraut, lactic acid man na na bacteria. Okay, very good. So that's the sauerkraut um, process. Um, Sauerkraut actually, hindi siya very familiar sa, sa Philippines. Uh, medyo similar siya in taste sa, sa kimchi. Um, ang kimchi ya uses uh, parang pechay na variety. Uh, um, ang ini siya is uses cabbage. So if you compare both, lain ang iya nga, nga vegetables. So medyo lain lang ang iya taste due to the differences in, in vegetables. Pero similar ang, ang lactic acid niya nga. Lactic acid bacteria ang nag-act on sa iya. To, to produce a fermented product. Um, sauerkraut is usually being used as a classic example for fermentation studies. When you when take up fermentation as a topic in food technology, for example, gina use gina per mga example si sauerkraut. 
very familiar kita sini acetic acid bacteria used um, to produce vinegar production of vinegar so substrate niya gapon is sugar remember ang vinegar ta nagahalin siya sa either kung coconut water ang imo nga substrate or ano pang ginahalinan sa ang vinegar yes tubo pineapple you can produce pero what is common between them is the presence of sugar. So from tuba, you go into vinegar. After, I think mga 24 hours, ma vinegar na lang siya. Okay. So, these microorganisms are called starter cultures, which are very crucial in the, um, in the fermentation process. And usually, um, starter cultures are prepared and contains living microorganisms. Hindi pwede nga patay siya. Dapat buhi siya and can multiply. So, you can also use, if you do not have the pure culture, you can also use carriers of that certain type of microorganism. So, rice flour, for example, is a carrier of microorganisms that can be used for the preparation of rice wine. Your starter cultures must be in healthy and active state. Pag very old na imo starter cultures or imo microorganisms, hindi na siya amo na rapid ang growth, hindi amo na siya kanami ang quality sa fermented product na ma-produce mo. Or more or less, ma-spoil lang siya, hindi siya mag sa fermentation process. It needs to be pure and genetically stable. Meaning pure, wala siya iba na other types of microorganisms na present. Should multiply rapidly, right morphological form, retain its product forming capabilities. Non-pathogenic, of course. Kaya nakaproduce ka naman tlani isang fermented product, pero kung pathogenic siya. And it can compete with other contaminants. Meaning to say, if the starter culture should be a strong starter culture that can overcome other types of microorganisms. There are, as I mentioned, you can use starter cultures from other substrates, but you can use commercial starter cultures, and you are ensured of it being pure. Pero mas, syempre, mas expensive siya. But you are assured of the quality of the starter culture. Okay? So that's it for fermentation. Questions so far? No questions? Sige. Let's go to your favorite before lunch. So, kulang na lang kamatis kaga. Okay, so we go into drying or dehydration. Actually, some people exploit the use of drying or dehydration to prolong shelf life of food products at home. Diba? Uh, are you fond of making tapa? Gina marinate mo ang meat. You make it in very very thin pieces. You marinate it, and then bulad under the sun. So you have tapa. What else? Is that if you have you bought fresh, really really fresh fish, pakas. Or well, there are a lot of fresh or dried marine products in the wet market. If you go to Miagao very often, which I I did for the last seven years of my life because I was teaching in Miagao and going back to the city every day. There are certain times in the year when you pass by Tigbawan when you can smell the smell of fermentation as well as the smell of drying or dehydration. Two technologies in one. So imagine the experience, di ba? Nice. <laughs> nice. pag mo sa Miagao, ang isadyan mo doon, Kaya because ang mga, ang, ang shrimp, ano na ganing, ang fry, shrimp fry, ang bata sang, ano tawag natin, kalkag? Kalkag, bata sang shrimps. Dira na ang nila na ginabulad sa kilidalan. Ba? Along with the cows and the dogs and the cats and the, no, and the, and the 
flies and the birds. Multinational siya. Multinational drying area siya. So dira siya. So samtang naga naga ferment siya because like, it starts to spoil. Ang fermentation niya is not actually producing a, a new product although kung iginamo siya, new product siya and palatable siya. Ang iya more sa spoilage nga part but because ginadry siya, nagadiminish ang ginainhibit mo ang iya nga dasig na pagspoil. Pero anyway, baho man gidya ang masangsang man gidya ang smell so na regardless kung hindi siya spoil or spoiled siya. Okay. So you experience all, most of this you experience if you are living near the sea where people usually are fond of uh, drying uh, what marine products outside, outside their homes. Pag medyo sa bukid-bukid ka, what do you dry? Hindi na marine product. Ano na? Either meat, what else? Fruits. Root crops. Nga dry ka mo mais, alay, ano pa? Beans. Nga dry ka mo sa ano ganing nang ginapanakot sa Stuitis. Mga pang pa-color, pa-color. Diba? So, those, that's drying or dehydration. But, do you know that there's a difference between drying and dehydration? Or are they the same? Or eh? Are they the same or are they different? Different? Who says different? Nga wala, ito panindiga, no? Different! Different? Do you think there's a difference? Drying or dehydration? Drying is? Ang drying involves heat. Dehydration. Huh? But what about drying? Drying can be dehydration. Drying can be dehydration, but dehydration not necessarily drying. Okay. Sige. Both refers to the removal of water. But drying usually describes the process of drying under sunshine or open air. While dehydration usually describes the removal of moisture by applying artificial heat current under controlled conditions. So when you usually speak of more on a scientific side of things, you use the term dehydration. But when you are describing the activity, usually being done by lo for local commodities or on the countryside, usually refer to the term dry. But sometimes, the difference is so not really explainable that they are sometimes being interchanged. You mostly refer it to it as dried mangoes, not dehydrated mangoes, diba? But when you think about it, if you refer to this description, you would, the dehydrated is the more applicable term. But, pangambaga dehydrated mang, ano na? Pero wag ka nga dried mango sa namit na. Diba? So, yeah. they are usually being an interchange. There are factors that affect drying. Surface area is one. The greater the surface area, the more efficient or the, the faster the drying time. If I have a slab of meat, one kilo, Imagine if this is a slab of meat, one kilo. I will dry this one. Same meat, same shape. What will I do is cut it into five pieces, for example, and put them under the sun. Which dries faster? This whole meat or these five pieces of meat? The five pieces of meat. Because it has more surface area. Okay. The greater, the faster the product dries. Temperature. The greater the difference between the product and the drying medium, the greater the rate of drying. 
it does not say the higher the temperature, the higher the rate of dehydration. No, it does not work that way. It says the greater the difference between the product to be dried and the drying medium, the greater the rate of drying. So are we referring to the differences in temperature? Because for example, if your product is at, for example, already 80 degrees Celsius, a lot of moisture pa rin, your drying medium is at 80 degrees Celsius also. How can it possibly dry your product? Diba? But if there's a greater difference between the product that is to be dried and your drying medium, there's a greater rate of greater ang rate ang drying process. Humidity. The higher the humidity, the slower the rate of drying. Why? Because tagtag siya sa moisture ang imo nga. Atmospheric pressure, the lower the atmospheric pressure, the lower the temperature required to remove water. How do you explain this? Which has a lower atmospheric pressure? Lower, pag low altitude. Tama? Lower altitude, more pressure? Lower ang pressure. Di ba kung ta sa babaw ka? Mas taas ang? Ano? Hala. Mas? Sa mountain? Hala na lipat sila. Lower. Ano? High pressure sa dalong. Higher pressure sa dalong. Lower pressure sa babaw. So? Hala may ka-contest. Di sino nga ba yung mas higher ang pressure sa, mas lower ang pressure sa dalong? Nga, lower pressure sa dalong. Atmospheric pressure na? Atmospheric pressure. Density man asang uh, Yes ma'am Ano na The lower the atmospheric pressure The lower the temperature required To remove water Meaning to say Sa, sa high area Di nang taas ang ano Taas ang temperature sa Taas ang temperature sa babaw No no Din mas lamig? Sa uh, babaw. So lower man ang... Okay. So which... Mas din mas dasig mas... Din mas dasig ang uh, pag-remove sa water. Sa dalong or sa babaw? When we are talking about atmospheric pressure. Then. Sa dalong. Lower temperature. Solute concentration. When we talk about solutes, solutes in, in food can be in the form of sugars and other compounds. Pag high in sugar, it dries more slowly. Um, this one, this concept in dehydration is being utilized, for example, in the dehydration of mangoes. Um, in dehydration of mangoes, some, in some, some uh, manufacturers employ pretreatment such as osmotic dehydration first prior to actual dehydration. What is osmotic dehydration? They add sugar to the mangoes and leave it overnight. The presence of sugar, when you still go back to your osmosis na concept, madumduman nyo pa ang science of osmosis? From uh, gamot from You move from higher concentration to lower concentration. 
So if you have sugar and mangoes, your sugar tends to drive out moisture from the mangoes. And it helps in that dehydration. Why? It shortens dehydration time. Pag na manotis mo pagka the following day sina, nagatubig siya. And then you drain your mangoes from there and then you dry them in your oven, for example, or drying cabinet. And it lessens electricity cost because mas shorter ang imo dehydration time. So most of those who are into dehydrated products use the science of osmotic dehydration. Sometimes they use sugar, sometimes they use salt to extract first initial amount of water or moisture content from your food product prior to the dehydration process mismo. Okay. As drying progresses, the concentration of solutes becomes greater in the water remain and in the water remains causing the drying rate to slow down. So manotis yun na um, for those who are into the engineering side of the dehydration process. Sino ang mga engineers? Mga engineers direct or into study of, of the science of dehydration. Manotis nyo nga sa dehydration curve, very high ang um, uh, dehydration or uh, uh, water evaporation at the start of the dehydration process. Rapid siya at the start. Amat-amat siya mag-slow down, samtang nag-concentrate ng imo nga solutes. The, the, the smaller the water content, the longer the drying time kung arat na siya sa lower na, na, na nakuha niya na ang bulk of your moisture at the start of the phase. Mas rapid ang drying the rate and then amat-amat siya naga. Because nagaconcentrate ang imo solutes, mas difficult para i-pull out ang moisture from the food inside. Component. Okay? Binding of water. So what happens during drying or dehydration? There is, there is binding of water. As a product dries, its free water is removed. This water evaporates first. So remember, kagina sa concept sa moisture content, kag water activity. When we talk about moisture content, it's the total water present in your food. But water activity is the water that is mostly available for your microorganisms to use. And it exempts the water that is mostly bind to your cellular components or your food product. In terms of baking, uh, in terms of dehydration, amo man na siya ang difficult to remove. So usually, ang free water, amo na siya ang initially dasig siya ma-remove during dehydration process. Ang very difficult are those who are intertwined with the cellulose components of your food products. Water in colloidal gels such as starch, pectin, or other gums is more difficult to remove. And water that is most difficult to remove is that chemically bound in the form of hydrates. Form siya, naka embed siya sa, sa structures ng imo nga, nga food product. During dehydration, there are chemical changes that is happening. There is caramelization. Occurs if the temperature is too high. So na-notice nyo, some dehydrated products, medyo may browning na nag-occur or medyo may caramelly taste siya. Especially kung may sugar involved. Enzymatic browning caused by enzymes, prevented by inactivating the enzymes before drying. Sometimes, blanching is being used as a pretreatment prior to drying para i-arrest niya na yung enzymes before the dehydration process. Because pag hindi niya na-arrest ang enzymes, during dehydration, may enzyme activity, it's either nag affect siya sa texture component, nag harden ang food, or nag discolor ang food product due to enzyme activity, which wala mo na-arrest. But blanching is a way of pretreatment prior to dehydration, which we can, you can arrest enzymes. Non-enzymatic browning, controlled by drying the foods rapidly. So, in yan, you can, you can dry foods rapidly if you have a very efficient machine. Loss of ease of rehydration and loss of flavor. Okay? Nga may loss of flavor. Low is sugar. Water contributes to flavor. Yes, because some of your flavor compounds are soluble in water. So, naga, naga diminish ang iya nga, ang flavor characteristics sa imo nga raw produce because some of your flavor compounds are soluble in water. So, without the press, kay na dehydrate mo na, na dehydrate mo na siya, wala na siya something to be solved in. Or, some of your flavor compounds.